Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome and thanks for logging on. We're waking up with watches, starting our weekend right. Reach out to me because everything in this show is for sale. I've got the prices, boxes, papers, accessories, and extra photos for you. We buy what we sell, we sell what we buy. We're always looking to add inventory. If you want to trade a watch, we can often offer you greater value than an outright purchase. But if you want to sell, no upper limit on value paid. We will buy an entire collection. We pay cash, we pay fast, we wire the money to buy, trade, or sell. T. Masso at thewatchbox.com. Jumping straight in, I've always loved the Blancpain 50 Fathoms. It's the more romantic alternative to the Rolex Submariner. Now I like the Subfine, but the 50 Fathoms went upscale in the late 1990s. Created in 1953 as a special commission for the French military, it actually debuted slightly before that year's Rolex Submariner 6204. So this is the modern prototype of the modern dive watch. And what you see here is ISO 6425 compliant. This is a Blancpain 50 Fathoms diver in titanium, 45 millimeters, it is the definition of a modern dive watch. Constant seconds, more than 100 meters water resistant, this is 300. A timing organ or timing reference in a sapphire capped bezel. In 1998, Blancpain brought back the 50 Fathoms and, as I mentioned a moment ago, took it up market relative to the Rolex Submariner. We gained details like the cambered sapphire, the sapphire capped bezel, a dial and bezel that are fully luminous and in spectacular fashion, white gold hands, numerals and indices, and of course, the sensational caliber 1315 on the reverse side. Let me use my zoom here. Three mainspring barrels, extravagantly hand finished, 120 hour power reserve, free sprung for shock tolerance, six position adjusted, anti magnetic silicon hairspring, free sprung balance on top of that. And you can see the bevels are gloriously broad and mirrored. We have one, two, three, four different types of finish on the rotor and three mainspring barrels so it doesn't surge and it doesn't flag as it's wound and discharged. Now it's a big watch, but it doesn't wear huge. This is the Series 98 bracelet, much like the X71, only this one is titanium to match the model. The model that you see here came out in 2017 and in my opinion, it's a better 5015 on a couple of fronts. First, in titanium, it's much lighter, and you can see on my 16 centimeters circumference wrist, it wears just fine. It's broader across the wrist with the bracelet, but everything's light and easy to accommodate. Now, another thing I love about it is everything's satinated. The standard 5015 is all polished. This is a more subdued look, and while it's still luxurious, it's not garish. Finally, the standard 5015 in steel has a solid case back, whereas this one features a display case back. Caliber 1315 has always been gloriously finished and it deserves to be seen. You can also see that the bracelet, like the strap, fixed the case using screws and bars, very secure. We'll get a little bit closer. How does it sound? How does the bezel sound? How does it feel? Let's listen. 120 click, super precise. It's got a refinement that's lacking in a lot of cheaper dive bezels. And the indexing is something I prefer immensely over its other rival from the Valley du Jeu, the Royal Oak Offshore Diver. This would be my choice. Now, I do love blue, I do love subdued tones, but I really, really love scratch resistance. So you guys know that the year before this came out, Blancpain delivered what I consider to be the best all-around 50 Fathoms in the collection. This is the reference 5000 Bathyscaphe, but in ceramic. So 43.2 millimeters in gray ceramic with a blue ceramic bezel insert. There's a lot to love here. The watch is a little bit smaller than the 5015. It's only about 50 millimeters from lug to lug. It's got more of a vintage look. Big crown, no guards, squared off lugs, and minimal beveling. Now, the nice thing about ceramic is not only is it hypoallergenic and super light on the wrist, it's also incredibly scratch resistant. When buying a pre-owned watch, I always like to know it hasn't been refinished. With ceramic, you know for a fact it has not been refinished. In terms of tech spec and capability, identical to the 5015, we have a ceramic bezel cap instead of the cambered sapphire, but we have the same amount of luminescence on the dial, if somewhat less on the bezel. We have the same 300 meter diving depth, and critically, we have the exact same caliber 1315, the five-day power reserve, and the display case back to a pre 
appreciate it. It is as beautifully finished as what we just saw. It just comes in a package that is lighter, smaller, and utterly immune to conventional marking scratches and swirls. People ask, am I going to shatter ceramic? And my retort is always, not unless you're that guy who constantly shatters the sapphire on his watch. That's a rare guy. And I know most people watching this are better educated about how to handle their watches. If you've never broken a sapphire, you're not gonna break the ceramic. And it is smaller and it is easier to wear, especially on the sailcloth strap, which by the way is rubber lined. It also comes with a matching ceramic pin buckle, which I adore, because this is where a lot of watch companies tend to pinch pennies or cut corners. They give you a DLC black or a DLC black steel, either titanium or steel buckle. And of course that always gets scratched because when the watch is on the wrist and it's underneath your arm and you're moving your hand across your desk, you're scratching that buckle. Well, with Blancpain and the material science might of the swatch group, you get a pin and a buckle made of ceramic. So these aren't gonna scratch either. Now I'll throw it on my wrist so you get a good sense of the proportions. It's, it's more compact than what you just saw. It's thinner, it's shorter across the wrist. Of course, it's smaller in diameter. I would say it's comparable in terms of weight, but once you add the bracelet of the 50 Fathoms, the 50 Fathoms, even in titanium, is once again heavier. The watch has a bezel that's similar in terms of the quality. It's a little bit more audible. Let's get close so you can hear it better. It has the same 120 click index. It's a little bit more mechanical than the 5015. Now you got a good sense of that. Let's go with a full retro diver. By no means the first dive watch to join the scene in the 50s, which was probably the golden age of the dive watch. The Jaeger Le Coult and Le Coult E857 was designed for the American market. And in its original variant, the E857 Memovox Deep Sea Alarm, well, it was a watch made primarily for the U.S. market with about 800 created for the U.S. with the LeCoult branded dial and somewhere between 200, 300 made with the Jaeger LeCoult dial. It's generally assumed that 1,061 of the original were produced. They are rare, and the survival rate was low because in their day, they were mid-priced watches, not high-luxury products. Well, in 2011, Jaeger LeCoult brought back the Deep Sea with this, the tribute to Deep Sea, and it is very true to the original. As with the original, it uses an alarm rather than a timing bezel to let you know when your dive time is about to lapse. As with the original, it features a relatively simple case band, squared off lugs, no guards, unbranded crown, and a picture of a skin diver on the reverse side. Now what's different about the tribute to Deep Sea is that the US dial, the LeCoult dial, was the scarcer one. Originally, again, these were made for the US market, and you would have seen far more of the US dial than the Jaeger LeCoult, but on the tribute, the US dial is actually the scarcer of the two, with 359 of these made to 900 159 of the Jaeger LeCoult dial. Now it's a little bit bigger, but not much. It is very true to the original. Being only 40.5 millimeters, the original was 39.5. You can see we have the same kind of dial printing and bezel graphics, albeit in higher quality. And we do have lovely syringe style hands, plus a decent amount of loom, plus a luminescent index on the disc used to actually set the alarm. So you can easily set the alarm if you need to in the dark. It has a alarm that is designed to be most audible underwater. You feel it almost more than you hear it. And there is a resonation chamber on the reverse side. It is 100 meters water resistant and it has a true plexiglass crystal. So they want it to go deeply authentic with this tribute to deep sea. Now, of course, you can always clean up the dial by reorienting the index. And so you get a spare plexi with the watch. We have a recreation of the 50s, late 50s, early 60s tropic strap. These watches were originally made from approximately 1959 to 
62 or 63. A few went out the door in 63. By that point, prototypes of the successor, the Polaris, were already being made. Now, that tropic strap would have been rubber in its day. This is actually a piece of leather that has been pressed and perforated to look like the rubber strap. And you can see we have a vintage style unbranded steel pin buckle to be, once again, true to history. Inside, automatic winding. And with 45 hour power reserve, the original used a K815 bumper automatic. This is a caliber 956. And it's been through the master 1000 hours control, so it keeps time like a modern Jaeger LeCoultre watch. It's very comfortable, light on the wrist, and due to its vintage profile, low enough to fit underneath the cuff, you can absolutely use this as a dress watch if you wish. And they are very scarce. Altogether, there were only 959 Jaeger LeCoultre dials, 359 with the LeCoultre dial, and then three made with a red dial for a charitable cause. So these are exceptionally scarce, almost as much as the original model. Zenith is a brand I love deeply, and I feel like the early to late 90s were a golden era for Zenith. The early 2000s, more controversial, but this watch is representative of everything Zenith did right in the late 90s. While the watch you see here was sold in 2003, its design was largely established and frozen in the 90s. This is the Chronomaster design that debuted back in 1994. We have fluted lugs, a stepped bezel, a round case, oblong, chronograph pushers, and the old-style Zenith star on the crown. On the dial, several different types of guilloche, a triple calendar. We have the date, date, month. We also have a moon phase. You can see that there's a lovely guilloche rosette pattern for each of the sub-registers. It is a COSC-certified Swiss chronometer and a flyback chronograph that resets and restarts with a simple push of the trigger. This is the Chronomaster GT, and it gives you a lot of functionality. The flyback, automatic winding, the high beat column wheel chronograph, the triple calendar, the moon phase, the COSC certification of this caliber 4001, and a 22 carat gold hand finished winding mass. Not 21, not 18 carat, 22 carats. And we were at this point now where Zenith had phased out the strap tool holes in the lugs, so the lugs are solid gold, we were also at a point where Zenith had phased out pin buckles on flagship models, so you get this thick gauge gold folding clasp instead, so the feel is outstanding and the quality is undeniable. You can see even the fluting and the curvature of the buckle echo the fluting and curvature of the lugs, and it's not exceptionally thin, being just 13 millimeters thick with a sloped case plank, you can easily get a cuff over it. 50 hour automatic winding power reserve, super crisp column wheel feel with a lateral clutch and it is a beautiful movement. The El Primero always has been. Not every automatic chronograph is a good looking movement. The El Primero always has been exactly that. At 42 millimeters, it's large, but it's not as cartoonishly large as the later Chronomaster XXTs. You can see a 16 centimeter wrist wears it just fine. Comfortable, uh, versatile, and of course, a lot of functionality here between the calendar, the moon, the flyback chronograph, the automatic winding, and the COSC certification. This is the best of Zenith, and it has that double step 10 beat per second El Primero beat rate that I love. Doesn't come much more establishment than Rolex. That said, I love a Rolex that is unconventional, and we have exactly that in this meteorite dial, baguette set, platinum cased Rolex Oyster Perpetual Date 840. So this is a more modern variant, as you can see, post-2018 with the crown between Swiss and made. It has an exquisitely untouched platinum case and bracelet. The pins are actually fixed with ceramic coat so that the coat around the pin prevents the white gold, or I should say the platinum, from actually wearing away the pin. And that's what always caused Rolex bracelet stretch. Not stretching the links, but the wearing of the pin inside the link that would hold the pieces together. So now ceramic coated the platinum and also white gold and also rose gold on the date 840s cannot wear down the pins so the stretch is killed dead. Famous crown clasp. It's actually more sophisticated than it was in the past. No longer friction fit. You can see that there's a beacon to hook internally and so it actually snaps shut and has to be lifted and unlocked if you wish to open it. So it's quite secure. All of this 100 meters water resistant. So yes, swimming is good. We have a 
twin lock crown in platinum, we know because the symbol is a solitary dot. We have a meteorite dial with the iron oxidized and preserved to show the vidman staten patterns, so no two are exactly alike. Set with baguette diamonds, one of the most exquisite uses of gems on a men's watch I've encountered. Double quick set hacking seconds, 70 hour power reserve, certified chronometer, shock resistant, water resistant, and anti-magnetic thanks to a niobium zirconium blue oxidized hairspring, Rolex Coles Power Chrome Blue. 47.5 millimeters from lug to lug. A big difference between the Date 82 and the Date 840 is that the two features solid end links and a distance of over 53 millimeters lug to lug. Here, the bracelet does not project beyond the lug, so it is 47.5, even though those two models are only one millimeter different in rated size. They have a huge distinction in how they fit. This can be worn by a fairly small wrist, maybe even 13 and a half centimeters circumference if your wrist is very flat, whereas I would never say that about a Date 82. The mass is awesome. Solid platinum case back, solid platinum center links, thick gauge platinum clasp. It really feels like a 44 millimeter platinum watch from any other brand, and it is deeply impressive. This is an unusual and exotic day date, a rare way to get a Rolex that nobody else is going to have. This might be the coolest enamel dial that Patek Philippe has ever done on a couple of levels, because you're looking at the 5370P011. The original version of this came out with a platinum case and a black dial in 2015. This, the 011, came out in 2020. It has a blue enamel dial, and the closer you get, the more you realize how impressive Patek's enameling has become. It's as glassy and smooth as lacquer, deeply difficult to achieve on enamel, and for decades, Patek only did enamel in white, because white did the best job of hiding the orange peel-like texture that vitreous enamel ordinarily created. Well, here with the blue and the black before it, we have something that shows just how exacting Patek's process has become. On a solid gold base, they fired up to 20 layers of blue and clear enamel, finished it by hand, and of course cooked it at 800 degrees centigrade, after which features were printed, including the scales, the tachymeter on the dial, which is designed to give it a vintage chronograph look from the era before tachymeters were on bezels. We also have leaf style hands at center with a surprising amount of luminescence for a dress watch. And then the applique white gold polished breguet Arabic numerals, always reserved for very special Patek watches. We have a hacking seconds function. We also have a coaxial split second function. So you can register the waxing or waning gap between two different events, such as race cars around a track or runners. And the watch does feature a pusher coaxial with the crown, a beautiful scalloped recessed case length creates channels on each side with white gold cabochon at each end, top Vesselton diamond between the lugs to remind you this is a platinum Patek Philippe. We'll throw it on my wrist, then we'll do a case back look. It's big. 50 millimeters lug to lug and 41 millimeters in diameter. It is 13.7 millimeters thick. So it's a full size watch, not oversized, but full size. I have no problem wearing this and I'd wear this with confidence. I do think if your wrist is much smaller than mine, there are gonna be some problems though. Take a look down the barrel. You can see it's really not near the edge of my wrist, but from over the top, it's getting there. It is however, low enough to fit underneath the cuff with a fairly flat profile and then a concave profile bezel. The watch does feature a full platinum clasp and then on the reverse side, caliber 29-535 Petit Second. As you can see, two different column wheel arrangements, one with the pincers to arrest the split seconds hand, and then the other, as you can see, allowing me to operate the primary clutch, which is lateral, and there is a black polished capped column wheel. The cap historically an element that is designed functionally in a chronograph. The idea being under conditions of extreme shock, this would prevent the horns and the levers from popping out of the crenellations of the column wheel. Today, the cap is ornamental, but once upon a time, very functional. Free sprung, four hertz beat rate, 65 hour, manual wind power reserve, six position adjustment, over coil hairspring, the hacking function, and then you could see that there is a little rack and a pawl, 
and that is for the instantaneous minute jumper. You can also see that you, you need to rethink your conclusion if you've decided Longa owns mainstream luxury watch finishing because the forest of steel, brass, and violet pivot jewels here is breathtaking and worthy of competition from the best, not just of Longa, but also from the independents. It's that good. Speaking of watches that rival the best independent brands, we really need to talk about La Tradition from Breguet. Now, Breguet historically is known for two model lines, the Marine, an aquatic sports watch, and the Type 20, 21, and 22s, the Aviator's watches. Those have long histories with the brand, but following the Swatch Group acquisition of Breguet in 2000, the idea was to create a definitive statement of what a modern era wristwatch Breguet watch would look like. and so. The 7027, which you see here in yellow gold, was the result bowing at Basel World 2005, 37 millimeters in diameter. It features a lot of hand finishing. We have a case that is cold rolled to create this coining. We have welded on lugs. You can see there are some marks. This is a pre-owned watch. The lugs are welded on with all evidence of the gathered material removed by hand. The straps are held on by screws and bars, an upscale alternative to spring bars. Little thoughtful details like a kerf under the crown so you could dig your nail in to pull out the crown. And then the dial featuring a solid gold dial cut on a rose lathe to create the guilloche, and then silvered to create the silver white look you see here. Hands as well as screws fired to create an oxidized blue coat. Power reserve indicator with a hand engraved power reserve scale, 50 hours manual wind up at about 11 o'clock on the dial. We have a dial that is based off the design of a vintage Breguet pocket watch from the lifetime of the master with the sub-dial at the top, the barrel centered, and then a set of finger bridges with vintage style pocket watch wheels leading to a balance structure that features Breguet's historic parachute shock protection spring, and then some modern elements including a free-sprung recessed bolt aerodynamic balance, and we have an overcoil hairspring designed to center the mass of the hairspring for concentric breathing in any physical position. That was another Breguet innovation. And you can see it does feature hacking seconds, so you can set it precisely against a reference time if you wish, and you're quick, and you can visualize what the seconds display would look like. Now, when you wind it, you get a little bit of theater, and on the reverse side, we have another power reserve indicator that gives you even more theater, as you can now see the indicator moving. You can see the scale right there. On the back, this is correct. This is how a watch would have been finished historically in the era of Breguet. Before Cote de Genève were established, you would have seen frosting either by a wire brush or in Breguet's era, probably using acid to reductively pit the material. You can see elements like the Breguet name have been engraved by hand, and we do have mirrored anglage. You may think that this is a crude finish because it's historically oriented rather than modern, but all of the modern standards are applied, and you can see the beveling is wide and impressive. We also have satinated wheels. We have polished screws, which you can see in addition to blued screws, so you get both. And on the dial side, you can see that the wheels themselves have been satinated and then internally beveled. We also have this lovely circular satination on the barrel cap itself. So lots to love here in a 37 millimeter case, so it can be worn easily by anyone, him or her, full deploy and clasp, throw it on the wrist, a fantastic looking watch, and one that really is quite compact, easily fitting underneath the cuff. This is one of the best dress watches you can buy at any price. And because of the reputation of Swatch Group, unfortunately, people don't think of them first when planning their next auto logerie dress watch purchase. So market prices on these are considerably below retail. And if you ask me, it's actually worth every cent they ask for it at retail. That said, some folks like to support the little guy, not necessarily because they think independent is better, but because they want to have a more personal relationship with their watchmaking team. And that's very true with Tim and Bart Grunefeld of the Netherlands. Out of Oldenzaal, they are the horological brothers who cut their teeth in the high end, working at Audemars Piguet, Renault et Papy. And since approximately 2008, they've been making watches under their own name. They created their company in the mid 2000s, started delivering very complex, very large watches around 2000. 2008, and they were asked by their collectors to pair it back 
Give them something simple and smaller. And so in late 2018, this was launched. This is the Grunefeld 1941 Principia. Their first automatic watch it uses the 1941 case, which is 39.5 millimeters. And as you can see, this example in stainless steel, very durable, only about 47.5 millimeters from lug tip to lug tip. So not only is it compact in diameter, it's also short across the wrist. There's scalloping creases, curves, flutings, concave inflections, all sorts of detail in the profile of the lugs, the case, and the bezel. So a lot of nuance here. The dial is turquoise. You can see it's been cut traditionally with black polished and faceted individual applique indices. We have alpha hands at center, fired blue with polished center and cannon pinion. And of course it is made in the Netherlands. We have this lovely buffalo leather strap, which has a wonderfully supple feel and an unusual grain and texture because of the uncommon donor animal. I'm sure it wasn't donated willingly, but all the same. This buffalo died a hero. It's Dutch orange on the bottom. You can see the caliber here, actually based on an Andreas Streller basic design. So it is based on a Streller core, but highly modified by the Grunefelds, including the style of the finish, the adjustment, as well as the material used for the bridges specifically, because here the bridges are all stainless steel. Why? Basically to show off. Brass, German silver, fairly easy to finish. Steel, that's another matter. You can see that the bridges specifically are shaped like the bell gable roofs of traditional Dutch houses. Then outboard, we have anglage, which you can see on the edges, mirrored. Then we have this satin channel that runs relieved along the edges, inboard of the anglage. And then finally, we have media blast inboard of that, so the finishing is immensely complex. We have at least three different types of finish on the rotor itself, which is 22 karat. All of this automatic winding with 56 hour power reserve, six position adjustment, one more than a standard chronometer, a full balance bridge and a free sprung balance. And note, they skeletonized the balance bridge. They even customized the wheels with a distinctive double spoke design. The finish is world class. The function is undoubtedly as precise as you'd expect given the reputation of the Grunefelds and Andreas Streller. Adjusted beyond chronometer standards, automatic winding, 56 hour reserve, and a watch you can wear every day. Steel is real, they say, in custom bike building because of its durability and the everyday quality it imparts to anything made of steel. And you get that with this Grunefeld 1941 Principia. And then we close with what I consider to be possibly the greatest reverso ever made since the very first. Launched for 2011, but only delivered starting in 2012, this is the Grand Reverso Granfo. It is a watch that combines a Flinke enamel dial with the Grand Reverso case, and it is indeed Grand. It is a watch 48.5 millimeters lug to lug, 30 millimeters wide and about 10.2 millimeters thick, all in white gold with a solid white gold dial to match. It's exceptional. One of the most beautifully handcrafted reverso watches ever to leave Le Sentier. It does require a large-ish wrist. This isn't a reverso for tiny folks. Women, people like me with a petite wrist, uh, folks who are perhaps looking for something more compact. This is like reverso 976. If you're familiar with that, you're familiar with this. I'll let you decide whether 16 centimeters circumference can pull this off, but I would recommend 17 or up. Now the dial, it's all about the dial. Let's talk about it. White gold dial base cut on a rose lathe to create this spiral rosette and then fired up to 20 times with a translucent enamel. When you have a translucent enamel or lacquer over a base, it is called flinke. Now we also have white gold numerals, white gold minutes ring, white gold hands, white gold JLC logo, all of which have been polished bright and sit in a sea of translucent blue enamel. This is an extraordinary 50 piece individually numbered limited edition. It is 30 millimeters wide, 48.5 end to end. You can see inside engine turning on the interior of the chassis. And on the reverse side, it is a traditional reverso polished but unadorned. Back in the 1930s, the idea was that this side would be turned outward when you were engaged in vigorous activity and sports to protect the crystal from shattering. Today, it's used as a platform for customization or simply to cause wonderment and bemusement in your friends who will wonder what is on your wrist. The feel of these 
spring-loaded pin snap ball bearings, incredibly precise inside, master 1,000 hours certified, manufacturer caliber 822, 45 hour reserve, free sprung, hand adjusted, exacting in its accuracy. This is a spectacular JLC Reverso and one of the coolest watches the company has ever made from any model line. But if you're gonna get a JLC, you're gonna get one of two. You're gonna get a Memovox Alarm or a Reverso. Those are their icons. The choice is yours. Reach out to team also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details of any watch you saw in today's show.